8th generation of iPhones, with the 10 being the 10th anniversary of it. So naturally, you and I would think that Apple would try to pull out all the stops to make sure that these phones are some of the best they've ever made, surpassing all of the phones around the market right now, such as the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, Note 8, and others from different brands. But that's where it falls short, because compared to other phones right now, the iPhone 10, especially the iPhone 8, really feels lackluster, lacking in different departments, and lacking especially in the looks. Now, I'm not saying that the iPhone 10 and iPhone 8 have no good things about it. They have a lot of good things going for it, such as the great cameras, beautiful OLED displays, the fact they have fast charging, and the fact that an emoji is pretty neat. However, that's where it stops. Besides from all of those, the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 are majority of the time just going to be a big pain in the butt to talk about. Honestly, it's just a big collection of old technology that does not revolutionize anything at all. They call it courage when they took out the headphone jack, but personally it did nothing. It didn't help or benefit anybody, including you and I. So let's talk about the iPhone 10 because compared to the iPhone 8, it actually has some good things going for it. So recently, it was just the iPhone's 10th anniversary, and Apple chose to celebrate this by creating a limited edition special phone, the iPhone 10. This phone was unveiled and announced at the event on the Apple campus in the Steve Jobs Theater by Tim Cook, who said that it is truly amazing on how the iPhone impacts the world every day. Now, the iPhone 10 has been the subject of many, many rumors and speculations over the past couple of months, and last week it was officially disclosed and unveiled. Tim Cook said that the iPhone 10 was the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. It's not just pronounced the iPhone X, by the way. It's pronounced the iPhone 10 because Roman numerals. The screen takes up the entire front panel and it's made from an original surgical glass stainless steel with glass on the back. It's got a 5.8 inch super retina display, which is basically a glorified way of them saying OLED. Oh yeah, by the way, it takes up the entire front panel. The iPhone 10 has a resolution of 2436 by 1125, which is OLED, which makes it probably one of the best displays that we'll have in this entire year, which I gotta take my hat off for Apple. They've actually done something well this display for once. Apple said that they have cured and stopped the plague that has affected so many OLED panels and screens in the last couple of years. So we're gonna have to see how well it does against different phones, especially the Galaxy Note 8, which has one of the best screens on the market, followed by the Galaxy S8 Plus, of course. Apple has also added Dolby Vision and HDR10 support for stunning video playback. They've also added features such as True Tone Dynamic White Balance Adjustment, a feature that also seen in the 10.5 inch iPad Pro and the new iPhone 8 models. Now we don't need to talk about the other specs and cameras of the iPhone X because we all know that the camera and the performance is going to be unbelievable and practically unmatched. However, the one thing we need to talk about is the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. I don't know what drugs they were smoking and taking when they were deciding if they should release another phone besides the iPhone 10, but wow. The iPhone 8 is the 7S. Okay, we probably should talk about good things about the iPhone 8 first. Start starting things off, the iPhone 8 is nowhere near as expensive as the ridiculously, ludicrously expensive iPhone 10. Standing at a whopping $1,000. $1,300 if you're going to increase the storage, by the way. It's got the same OLED display as the iPhone 10, and the iPhone 8 Plus will preview and show content much better than the iPhone 10 because the screen is bigger, however, it, it retains the same ratio as the iPhone 10 and it manages to pack the same screen in a smaller size. It's also got the same camera as the iPhone 10. Also, it also has great RAM and great specs just like the iPhone 10. If anything, it's just like the little brothers of the iPhone 10. The one thing it does have that the iPhone 10 doesn't is a home button. So yeah, never thought I'd say that. Home button. And quite frankly, that's where all of the good things about the iPhone 8 ends. The iPhone 8 is 
just a phone that offers nothing different in a big enough of a scale compared to the iPhone 7 and certainly lacks what the iPhone 10 has, that screen. So the device just doesn't do it for me and a lot of people. It offers absolutely nothing that Samsung hasn't already thought of or done, including other Android manufacturers and phone brands. I mean, leading up to the phone's release, the only interesting rumor and thought that I had was that the iPhone 10 and 8 were reportedly able to fast charge wirelessly over a distance of a couple feet, which would have been a big breakthrough. However, now that the iPhones have been announced, they don't really do that. So, yeah. Another big thing about the iPhone is that they don't support USB-C, which is really sad because they still stick to USB cables like Lightning, which isn't a bad thing. However, the MacBooks all have USB-C. They even took out other ports just to make sure that it was just USB-C. So when they don't implement USB-C on an iPhone, it just makes you wonder, what are they doing? I mean, you need a freaking adapter just to connect your iPhone to your MacBook. I mean, I don't hate Apple. I use Apple devices. I have an iPad. I have an iPhone. However, I mean, it just they're just a complete joke. The iPhone X is alright. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are just terrible. They should have never been announced. It's a complete embarrassment for the company, which has lived up to many hardships and has risen. And this time, they didn't do any of those. And me personally, I'm just not a fan of them ditching the fingerprint sensor. I mean, I wish they could have just put it on the back or done something, but they didn't. They just took it off completely and just replaced it with the Face ID. Ooh, another big thing. It doesn't even come with a freaking wireless charger. And the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, or the 10th anniversary iPhone 10. Like, really? It's one of the special features that you showed in the keynote, and yet you did not put any way for that, the regular customer to implement it into their daily lives. So I don't get what kind of innovation and leaps forward you're talking about. If you watched elders react to the iPhone 10, you have seen that they're all skeptical of the Face ID. And they're elders, so what does that make you and I think? Well, nothing good, because we don't want it. They ditched the Touch ID and replaced it with a much jankier option of the Face ID. And personally, if you're going to switch from an Android or Windows phone to the iOS phone, for a thousand dollars, you'd want something which is good, but it isn't. The Face ID may or may not have failed, and it just doesn't feel natural or faster than the Touch ID. Personally, there are much better Android phones out there, like the LG V10, 20, 30, the Samsung Galaxy S7, S7 Edge, S8, S8 Plus, or the Note 8, which, despite the fact that the Note 8 and the iPhone 10 are really similar in price, with only a difference of around $100, $150, they are in two completely different brackets of quality, with the Note 8 just dominating in nearly other aspects that the iPhone 10 all fail at. The only thing that the iPhone 10 probably does better is the camera, and without a doubt, the performance. However, the performance of phones nowadays are so good that having a Geekbench score of around 10,000 in the multi-core score doesn't really seem that impressive nor important anymore. Now the question that I've been asking myself over the past few days is that will Apple lose the momentum they built up over the last 10 years? You see, companies and manufacturers over time when they fail to deliver a good product or line of products they tend to go down and lose momentum. Other manufacturers in other industries have all done this. So the question is, will Apple do the same? Because while some learn and get back up, other companies do not. I think that Apple has been riding the coattails of its real success when the iPhone was an AT&T exclusive. I have a buttload of female friends, I can tell you they are generally speaking that this is a de facto market, at least in my personal opinion. See, things don't always go the way that you expect. and for Apple, this is no different. Like, tell me, how many people do you see out there that actually have iPhones? There are a lot, however, all the celebrities and famous people that you see all have iPhones. Apple needs to stop depending on the market of people that think that the iPhone is a fashion accessory and something for rich people. 
because they said themselves that the iPhone has impacted daily people's lives in huge ways. And if not, if it's not going to be used by the average person, uh, the average John and Jane Doe, then what's the point? There it will be a day, mark my word, words, in which Apple will need to differentiate and innovate from the other companies. They cannot just do the same thing that they've been doing over the last couple of years or they are going to be the next HTC mark my words it will happen so it will not be today it won't be tomorrow it may not even be in five years but they need to stay ahead of the curve and do something truly special in order to make sure that they stay on top of the game and don't get subdued by other smaller companies that are rising right now Samsung has come a long way I mean personally I used to hate TouchWiz but they have done a good job fixing all the issues they had by using a lot of user information and data. It still isn't perfect by no means. However, I still experience micro stutter, etc. But playing with my dad's iPhone after a year, it honestly is not much better. They are going to have to step it up eventually or suffer in the long run of the following 10 years. We have all seen this before, really. Arrogance and complacency in a business environment where change is happening virtually every three to six months is no joke. Apple has gotten away with this because of the fact that it is due to its big name and reputation and its first major initial success, the iPhone, the original one 10 years ago. They are like the NES and SNES of their time. Samsung seems to be like the PlayStation, innovating and coming out of nowhere to take the crown. So thanks for watching the video, hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave suggestions and comments down below. If you're free, make sure to like and subscribe so that I can grow and Thanks for watching the video, so yeah, see ya! Goodbye!